Hello, my name's Dr Sharon Leal and I'm a Senior Research Fellow at the University of Portsmouth. My research focuses on eliciting information and detecting deceit. One method that we use for this is a, a technique called the model statement technique. Because what we find is that people often, liars and truth tellers, do not give us enough information. But we find if we give them a, an example, a detailed example, of how much information we expect to hear from them, then this makes both liars and truth tellers give us, give us more details. The type of detail, however, differs. So if you, you get somebody to give an example of, or an account of, what's, of an event that's happened, and then you give them this model statement. It's, it's uh, a detailed account about a, a young man attending a race day. So it shouldn't be related to the topic of in investigation. It should be something totally unrelated. And it's available on the Crest website if you would like to use it. Then you, after you've played this, there's, you get a lot more information. And then you can look for cues to detecting deception. And these might include things such as we know that liars uh, tend to use self-handicapping strategies. These are giving you reasons as to why they can't remember very well. Um, truth tellers tend to include complications in their stories. So if you think about any recent event that you've attended, a, a day out or, or any event, then you can, if you think about it truthfully, not everything will go exactly to plan, whether it's a taxi being late or um, the, somebody not turning up on time. There's always something that actually does not go to plan. And what we find is when liars make up a story, they don't include those complications. Truth tellers do that far more, and that becomes more evident after um, you've played them a model statement. Another thing is that we find that liars tend to, after the model statement, tend to include what we call more common knowledge details. These are um, details that they might think that you want to hear or that you will expect to happen. So if, for example, I say um, I'm lying and I say I went to, to Paris, then I might do a sort of scripted answer, a common knowledge answer of Paris, uh, about Paris, such as I visited the Eiffel Tower, uh, I went on the, the Seine, uh, visit the Ar Arc de Triomphe. These are all quite common knowledge details because everybody knows those places exist and in, in highly high tourist areas in Paris. Truth tellers, however, would include more idiosyncratic detail about, about those uh, trips. So it could be I went to Paris, uh, visited the Eiffel Tower. There was <coughs> actually two levels, but I got up to the first level in the lift, got out and I got so scared I couldn't actually go to the top. There was a man outside doing caricature drawings, all these extra little things that truth tellers will um, tend to include in their stories. For more information about our research and for other examples of eliciting information, detecting deception, please visit the Crest website.